Strategy, action plans, and tactics. A plan of action, a strategy is a plan of action paused to achieve a major or overall aim. Tactics is an action or a strategy carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Strategies and action plans are the same. We're going to get in there. I'll make it simple. I told you, I'm a pretty simple person. Tactics is what you're going to do. We have priorities. Y'all know these priorities. We do them. I, I have done, I do them in every one of these when I assess. I just went over the dumpster. I look at that building, see what's in that dumpster before you go up there. You might be breathing something that a boom. Y'all know these first priorities, life safety, instant stabilization, property conservation. These are our action plan priorities. These are our track. I've lived with these. Before I get into this, I know they're slicer, dicer, everything else. Somebody come up with some new acronym. Somebody wrote a book, 15 minutes fame, make money, travel over a company, teach and travel. And I have all the respect in the world for them. But it's like I taught in that captain school. I have all the respect for Chief Rossini. He's a legend in the fire service, and I, without a doubt, he's done probably more for the fire service or as much as anybody. Ray McCormick, a lieutenant at New York that's come up with, uh, I think it's Dicer, he came up with. Experienced officer, super, travels all over the country and teaches. I have respect for firemen in every city in this world, volunteer. I've got kin folks in Wisconsin. But folks, I never fought a fire there and they never fought a fire here. Chief Persini never fought a fire here in Dallas, Texas. Besides that, how do you burn an adobe building in Phoenix anyway? But uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Phoenix, right? But New York ain't like us. We don't ride six people on a truck. We don't have the same equipment. We don't have three-stage pumpers like they do in Baltimore, Chicago, New York. So we're comparing apples and oranges. I know we have to compare metropolitan cities. Back 100 years ago, that was a population of 400,000 people in same size apartment or whatever. That's where we get our comparisons from. I don't know if that's still the same, but that's what it used to be. But we can't compare each other. We don't have 30 chiefs like Houston's got. Two days ago, or whenever it was, had a third or fourth going on, two high-rise boxes. We only had two chiefs that we could send to Oak Cliff to a high-rise box. We're not the same. We can use a lot of the same strategies, but our tactics has got to be different. Rescue. Civilian firefighter exposure to internal and external confinement, extinguishment, overhaul, ventilation at time. If you follow those on every situation, you'll do good. It's when we decide that we want to go to number four first. That's when we burn the whole apartment complex down. Because we went to the fire instead of going down to cut it off on the exposure, confining it. Then let that second or third engine be the glory hogs that puts the fire out. Your job is to do that.
If you follow those on all those different instant car fires, you pull up on a car fire, you better look and see what's going on. Does it have a magnesium engine in it? You better be damn careful about a lot of things on there. Is the air bear going off yet? Before you send that rookie up there to start sticking that nozzle inside her? Did you wet it down underneath it to neutralize the fuel? Did you pull up on the green building down there and people are coming out and they said some, the 90th floor, or it doesn't have that many floors, but on the 38th floor, they opened the envelope and it's got white powder in it. What do you do? If you're a private riding the seat on engine four and you pull up there, or engine 18, what do you do? You better dang sure know what you're going to do. As I mentioned earlier for the civil service, I could care less if they can run a four alarm fire. All you got to do is say, give me a 211, if they has to. It's out of his hands then. If you're a captain, it's out, it basically out of your hand and put a second on it. You can put a third on it. Wait for a deputy to get there or a battalion chief. It's out of my hand. I just have to wait on the deputy to get there. But you better realize, okay, call hazmat. These people running out here, I better holler and try to get me a truck down here in case we have to do a whole scale decon by just sticking the damn ladder pipe in the air and decon people because they're getting out of there. You get fully dressed, you go up there on the 38th floor, 37th floor, and you tell everybody, stay in, don't leave, you don't want to take it home with you, go in another room and set, wait, I got hazmat coming. You're taking care of the life, the rescue, exposure to other people, you're confining it, you're waiting on hazmat to get all their level A suits on and get their little chairs out where they can sit down and do whatever else they do. And they'll go in and extinguish it and take care of the problem. You've done your job. That's what you have to do. You follow these guidelines, you'll be, you'll be doing a good job. Now, let me get back to her. Those are, that doesn't say you have to do them in those orders. You have to consider them in those orders. You all understand the difference? You have to consider them. You don't have to do them in those orders. We'll go through offense and defense and everything. If you go to defense them, you done kissed it by. It's gone. So the other part of it is over with. You're not going to do a damn primary when you go defensive. We don't want what happened when y'all came up and relieved me that morning. Defensive means we've kissed it by, it's over. Primary's over. We'll do a secondary and we'll get a bulldozer there. On all incidents, first steps to consider them. Follow the steps you identified as priority, constantly evaluating. Has anything changed? Do I have to go back to rescue now? Someone comes up to you, hey, there's a little kid down here in this end apartment. Well then, yeah, then everything changes at that point. It's back to your priorities in order. We'll burn the building down for trade. Folks, I hate to say this, but no, I don't hate to say this. The green building's not going to burn. I, you don't have to worry about that. Unless someone flies an airplane into it or put a bomb on it, it's not going to burn. It's, they built it not to burn, 
There's security everywhere. It just won't burn. Now, we have fires in there, and it's just fire load in there. It's hard to burn concrete and steel. But if it did burn, I'm not risking anybody if that's one person getting hurt. We'll burn it to the ground. I'll probably be calling on the carpet and everything else, but I'll call it on the ground. And I, I'll tell these stories on myself. Sunday afternoon, I don't know if you're at 24 or not, when we burnt the Brit, the overpass down. Dead man curb, Han Freeway, 175. Sunday afternoon, tanker truck turns over underneath it, burning. You can see it probably from Fort Worth if you look. We get down there. I have to make a decision. Rescue, the driver's out. But I still have life issues. Exposures, confinement, and extinguishment. We didn't extinguish it. We let it burn. Yes, we replaced the bridge. And everybody had to go alternate ways to get down around there. But I had to make a decision to let it burn or let 10,000 gallons get into the uh, drains and go all the way through South Dallas to Lincoln High School down through there or let it burn. That's simple for me. I let it burn. We covered the exposures. We dammed it best we can. Johnny Bass was the captain. I said, Johnny, what, what did we do? They put their boom. There's no way they're going to stop 10,000 gallons. We tried to save the bridge by putting some water spray underneath it to cool the concrete. It didn't work. It looked good. At least on TV it looked like we were doing something. But... Uh, But I followed those bills. Extinguishment, I considered it. I didn't consider it first. I did consider it. Tanker truck on 30. Another one that you could see it from Sunnyvale if you were coming into Dallas that night. 10,000 gallons. Burning. Let it burn. Try to put it out. You got to be realistic. I went to National Fire Academy on hazmat many, many years ago. I'm not a hazmat guy. I don't claim to be. I don't like them. I don't want anything to do with them. So anyway, but I do know they can't handle 10,000 gallons of fuel leaking. They can try to, but they're not going. It, it, it is not going to happen. So do I want it running off her, running through Kessler Park, doing all that? No, we just let it burn. They had to come back and replace some of the concrete or asphalt, whatever the hell they had out there there. They did come back and put some warning barricades not to take that curve so damn fast. But I use these things on everything I do. I'm simple. I'm simple-minded. Don't make his job harder. These are tactics. Hand lines, putting ladders up, laddering a two-story building where people can have access off of it. Those are, those are tactics that we use. Inch and a half, two and a half, wind off two and a half of lines, deck gun, ladder pipes, those are the tactics we use. Those are not strategies. Those are tactics. <coughs> Condition of structure when you're giving a verbal size up. I was asked to go over this by a chief, so she's not here. What is vacant? 
When you report out on a structure and you say, used to be truck 43, now engine 20, two. two. If you're out and you report out, engine two out, we got a vacant structure. I'm not calling on you. I'm just using it. Okay, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I'm just using engine two. I hate to pick on South Dallas all the time. That's real. Even though they need to be picked on most of the time. But what is that when I report out with a vacant structure? What does that tell you? Huh? No, no occupants. No occupants? Does it have a fire load? Yes. Do you have the same responsibility to protect property as you do lives? Yes. Some. It's a risk factor, but I mean, it, you, you have the responsibility. It, it, it's written. Of property, yes. You take an oath. It's written. You have that responsibility. We weigh the risk assessment, and we do risk management all through the, the incident. But when you report out and you say vacant, most of us think nobody's there. Nobody's, how do you know nobody's there? Okay, boarded up. How many of y'all have been in boarded up structure and we've got dead people? Turn around and look at the room. I've had this battle with all these 14801s and everybody else in my career. I'd be great if I get an order from Chief Stidham, comes down the pike and say, we will not go in and fight vacant structure, as 801 said one time. I'm in. That makes my job easier. But I'm also going to say, Will you please call him to explain it to the press when they want to know why this grandma's house was burned up? Or a million dollar painting hanging on a wall just because no one's living there but their furniture is still there? We got all definitions of vacant. That's what I, we had all different. Boarded up, whatever. I'm just saying when you report out, Try to be specific. If it's boarded up, say, boarded up. You don't know if anybody's in there or not in there. These homeless people are like rats. They find holes everywhere to get in. Hell, they go under it and, you know what, Joe, your workplace. They go under it and come up to the damn floor. It looks like it's, no one's there. I found them in an attic that looked like lobsters because we deck, oh not we, people deck gunned it. And that's where the guy was sleeping. We steamed him. All I want you to do, just consider what we're on the sides of. Don't just take it for granted that no one's in there. Now you've got to make decision if you're going in there or not. I can't make that decision. You have to make that decision. That's the reason you train, 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 prepare, 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 evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. Involved on all incidents, not just structure fires, anywhere there's a risk assessment. What is wrong if you pull up on LBJ and Hillcrest, I've got a car fire out here. It's, it's fully gone. Instead of saying, hit a location. You don't have to give a size up. All you got to do is hit a location on that run if, that's all, if, if you want to. But why don't you get on there and tell 660 what you got? It tells everybody in the city. It tells Amos crew, oh, we're going another way. You pull up on a dumpster. Engine 22 is out on court. We got a dumpster fire, but it's about five feet from a building. That tells everybody. It tells your chief if he happened to be on air, well, we might want to tootle down that way. All you have to do is hit on location, though. You don't have to do that. Is there anything wrong with doing that? Is it helpful? <laughs> it 
interior, I'm going to let y'all read that. Interior and offensive. Is there any difference? Y'all read it. I, I copied and pasted that from the 600. Or is that what it is? 600, 601, or whatever it is. Y'all got it studied. Y'all know where I got it at. Is there any difference? It's the same, ain't it? So, what is the difference? Interior is when you're going in and you're, that's what you're doing. It, it's semantics. It, offensive, it means it's an action you need to take before you go in. If you do a softening effect and you go in, okay, that's an offensive deal, but you're still offensive. You're not doing uh, defensive or anything. That's semantics. This is just when you give them the size up. Tell them something. Okay? I get so mm, irritated. I don't, I don't want to pick one, but I'll use engine five. Engine five out, we got a one story brick, none to show, and all come to continue merge response. I'm second chief driving all the way from downtown, hadn't eaten, it's cold, and I don't feel like going out there. One story brick, nothing showing all. You want me to go code three all the way out there. I don't mind going, but we all know when I get to Lake Junior Bruton, disregard a second chief. Mark's laughing about that. I'm going to follow the rule. We're going. I pulled up many a time. Oh, I forgot you're coming. Y'all can clear. That is a safety dangerous issue. You've got, well, when Tracy is driving, we might be going 90 miles an hour. I don't know, but you've got an issue with a fire department vehicle going code three from downtown Dallas to Bruton Road almost in Balt Springs. With a one story, nothing showing. Continue emergency response. Take ownership if you're on engine five. If you don't have anything going, what's going to happen? It might blow up about the worst thing. But even if you got a fire in or in the oven or whatever it is. Do you need a second chief? Do you need a second truck? Take ownership of it. That's the easy way out. Exterior strategies. Actions takes an exterior and involves structure prior to interior strategy. Okay, you can call that softening. You can call it whatever you want to. You're doing something before you actually go in. But you're still planning on an offensive attack, interior attack. When we get to this, what did I say a while ago? It's over. It's over. Defensive, it's over. Primary is over with. Secondary is over with until we get the bulldozer or whatever we got to do. We put red tape up around that sucker. Y'all do know the difference between yellow and red, I hope. Anybody shaking your head no? Anybody shaking your head yes? Red tape, you don't cross it unless the incident commander tells you to. That's a simple way to put it. If there's red tape there, you did not cross it. I don't care if you're 807. I don't care if you're Chief Coatman. You do not cross that, cross that red tape until you talk to the incident commander. There's a reason to put it up. It's dangerous. How many youth surfers we got in here besides Albert and Cap? Oh, is that it? Oh, okay. I knew we, we had to have some prima donnas in here. So anyway, uh, until we get them in there to earn their money to check it out, we don't go. We don't cross it. That's it. Red tape, you do not cross. 
We had no attack. We had combination strategies. Damn. Whenever y'all want to go, go. I, I've got some more stuff I need to talk about, but I got one uh, an example here of combination that I have to go over because I want to show how intelligent some of our chiefs are. Huh? You weren't there. there. There was a deputy there that was an assistant or whatever. Any of y'all make the big pool fire out the day before Crowley got killed out in Redbird? Any of y'all make it? We get it on second alarm. Hell, it's almost in Duncanville, I guess, way out there. Big warehouse. There's a railroad track here. This is a vacant lot. This thing has got parapet walls which have fire curtains that drop down about six feet inside. This thing's got 30 something overhead doors all the way down it. It is huge. The last half of it is a Dallas food bank. Loaded. I get there, I'm told there's a ladder truck set here with an aerial, and a ladder truck here set with an aerial. Fire's coming through. Hell, it was coming through the roof when we went from downtown Dallas when they got there. I pull up. I'm told that we're going to we kiss the building by. Kiss the building by. Okay. I, I, that's not my, okay. I, okay. I was told, hey, I need you to go over here and check the backside, or whatever. We're not getting any apparatuses in here. I go around, I look. There's no smoke coming out of these. Down here, I don't know how far down, six or seven overhead doors, then with there's smoke coming out of there. To begin with, where would you put the third truck? Going through reseal. Somebody tell me, where would you put the third truck, you think? Down here, right? To cut it off. Protect exposure, confine it. Guess where they put it? Coming through the roof. The wall falls. Why would you put the first truck there? Can anybody tell me why would you put the first truck there? The first truck ought to be going on Reseo down here. It's coming through the roof. We don't worry about extinguishing it at this point. That, that comes later. If you want to put the fifth or sixth truck down here, fine. My dearest, one of my favorite captains, Captain Broder, Sam, truck 26 is sitting down here. And ignorant me, simple as I am, I asked Sam, Sam, can I crawl up your ladder? Yeah. I crawl up here and I look. There's these fire curtains everywhere. I'm not real smart, but I do know that those parapet walls, there's something to blow them. They go somewhere. They just don't put those there to look good. There's a fire stop in there somewhere. I break a window. I see daylight all the way across. There's overhead doors here that's open, and you can see the fire. I go to the deputy. I said, Oh, should I say I asked? Maybe not. I said, we need to get blitz lines, put them in here, get out, set them there in those openings. Captain Bronner told me he can set his truck in that overhead door when we open it to cut it off. Truck four was there, Captain Diggs. Some of my wife's old real 33 guys were there on 33 engine. 
We opened that door up. Captain Sam did exactly what he said. He stuck that nozzle right in that door and opened it up. After we got these in them. There's nothing I did. I just followed the friggin' deals. We saved this part of the building. We saved the Dallas food mine. It was hard work. We could have stood outside. But I go back to what I'm saying. We have a responsibility for property. Now, if it was dangerous and it was a risk assessment that it wasn't and it was one of these low, medium, high, and I, I looked at it and I didn't think so, no. But that's a combination. I want you to ask yourself that question, this question. Rookies, you ask yourself this question. Why would anybody put the first truck squirting water and coming out the roof? I don't have the answer. I don't know. But does that go into what's in the Incident Command 600? What we're supposed to follow? No. Modes of uh, operation, investigation, y'all all know those. Quick attack, I'm laying the line. All I want to go in there is make sure you confirm when you're given the assignment. Battalion 1, truck 4, I want you to cut a hole in the roof. Battalion 1, the engine 6, I know you're buried in there and you can't hear me, but I'm letting you know truck 4 is on the roof opening it up. To let him know, I'm trying to give him some relief. Plus, if True Love drops an axe down through there and hits him in the head, he'll know it. But Then, I know he's busy. He might not be able to answer because I know how it is inside there trying to fight fire and take care of a damn guy that got an orange deal on his helmet that can barely find his way to work. He's got a short iron pike pole guy in it that belongs to him also and he knows that because we preach that. We work on that. That guy is his off truck four, short iron pipe pole belongs to him. He takes ownership of that guy in there. You bail out, he's yours. You know somebody's in there pulling ceiling for you because you ran across him or he ran across you. Truck four A, battalion one, we got a hole cut, we got a lot of smoke in there. We got fire coming out. Okay, get your ass off the roof now. You've done your job. But you open it up and you give engine six some relief. How many of y'all been there when you brought up the ventilator and it opens up? The relief that you have. Springer and I talked about this. He went to some seminar they had here from the San Antonio fire where they got killed or something. And Springer, wonderful the way he handles things sometimes and comes across. I think he probably irritated some people. But he had a point when he asked this question. He asked the guy, have you ever, because this guy, San Antonio, I think it is not a vertical ventilation fire department. Have you ever seen where vertical ventilation caused negative effect on operation? No. I've never seen one. What is it for? To localize the fire. Where does heat go? If you don't have that, where's it going? It's going to least seek the least resistance. If the wind's blowing in this vent and you've got a 16-unit apartment and the only place you got is the vent down at this end, guess where it's going? It's not going to fight the wind. They're not, the fire's not stupid. 
it's going this way. But if you cut a hole over it, it's coming out here until it consumes more, and then it might move down. But that time, you better have the signal pull two story, I mean two apartments down, hand lines up and add it, cut it off, and then we'll put it out. That's what vertical ventilation is for. The good part of it is if you're inside, it makes a lot of difference to you. It takes that heat out of you. And I don't have to do injury getting burned, so that's another thing. So. Y'all all know all this stuff. I put them in here just in case. Two in and two out. Y'all all know that. 900 square foot. If I don't have a backup line, they put that on YouTube. Guess who's getting a phone call? They weren't at the fire, but I thought we'd be getting a phone call. I want to know why, why didn't you have a backup line? Oh, maybe not me, but other people would. And I'm going to get in, when I get into high rise real fast, I'll talk about that. Keep it simply, constantly evaluating communication tactics. Three C's, clear, concise, confirmed. I'll tell the story myself. I'm inside a warehouse, back when I could go inside a warehouse. A lot of fire, battalion one to command. I need a 311. We're doing our business, I'm thinking. Where the hell? I don't, they didn't even tell me they got relief. What's going on? Well, we get it knocked down. I run out of air. I go out to get another tank. <coughs> Command's not too far. I said, where's all the company at? You want us to put a third on it? I asked for a third. A long time ago. I didn't get it confirmed. If you've ever been at command, we got all these chiefs up there flopping their jaws and everything else. These command texts is hard to hear. Right, Rudy? It's my fault. It's not, it's not command's fault. It's my fault for not getting it confirmed. That belongs to me. If I give a direction at a fire scene, I want you to tell me, because I'll come right back and say, Battalion 1, lobbing, lobbing Control, Battalion 6, did you, did you get that? Always get it confirmed. I call, or I don't, but if they call 18 Station, we talk to the officers, unless they're out, or acting officers. Swing a man to wherever. I don't want to, we don't talk to a private unless we have to. Two hours later, that private's been on the ambulance and made 14 runs. Cap didn't know, he don't know what to do. He, they got back, he doesn't know if we swung somebody or not. Yeah, he probably should have called me. But I might be out on the box somewhere. That's the reason we talk to the officers. We don't take it for granted. But you make sure it's confirmed. There's no place on the <coughs> incident for indecisiveness, confusion, or misunderstanding. Don't just listen, hear what is saying. There's a big difference. My wife accused me I don't listen. And I certainly don't hear what she's telling me. There's a big difference between listening and hearing. Hear what somebody's telling you. Okay? It's a two-way street. Transmit and receive. We have to do these things. Use them. They're guidelines, some of them, but we have to use them. Keep it simple. Evaluate. 
SOPs, folks, all they are is a standard to do something. It's not a rule that you have to do them. It's a mechanism to help you on your decision process something to follow. We have rules two in and two out, primary, secondary. But SOPs or help you do your job. They're standards. They have worked in the past. It's something for you to follow. Does that mean it works every time? No. That's when you come up with another tactic. <coughs> Drinks and witness with personnel, equipment, resources, internal, external, Time to act. We've already been over a lot of that. Size up. You took an exam. You're going to take an exam. It'll be in every book. It'll be the same answer as when the bell hits. I'm telling you, that's wrong. It's wrong. It starts today. Right in here, what you're learning is your size up for the next shift when you're working. It's when you're driving to work and you see a new building or you see one partially torn down or you see they're closing ramp downtown Dallas which we have no idea when that's happening. But that's your strategy starts then. It's not when the bell hit and you pull out, oh crap, we can't go this way anymore. Hell, my driver better find a way to work. He certainly don't know how to go another way now. Your size up starts today, next shift, tomorrow, whenever. You're answering a question on the test, yeah, when the bell hits. But size up starts today. Hazmatters, you surfers, rookies, when you're training, that's your size up. You're sitting at the kitchen table shooting a bull. You're having districts. You're studying district. That's your size up. You're not knowing your district when the bell hit. That don't help anything. Main thing I want you to listen at when you give a size up, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. It's not going anywhere. You're the only one there that's talking on the radio. Take a deep breath, look at what you got, listen to what's going on around you, and give you a size up. I know sometimes you, gosh almighty, we got fire coming out on the 12th floor of this high rise. Okay, fire's coming out on the 12th floor high rise. That's all you got to do. We got a month store building, fire's coming out on, just pick a floor close to it. Give me a signal 211. Engine 18 is hooking to the standpipe. I need the rest of y'all to do what you're supposed to do on a high rise. You've done your job. Don't panic. <coughs> Instant must be evaluated constantly. Uh, when I figure tactics, I, I don't just have, <coughs> this is what I'm going to do. I have alternates, 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 alternates. That's where I act, 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 not react. I got it in my mind. If this tact is not working, I know what I'm going to do. That's where you live it, dream it, sleep it. I know all y'all fantasize about being a big hero and carrying some good-looking girl out the front door. You saved your life and all this stuff. How many's done that? You know, we fantasize about stuff and we lay there and we think about stuff. I'm going to be a big hero and all this stuff. People in one district, B shift, is being penalized working for me. They know that. I'll make it clear with them. I don't write letters on people. 
that kicks the front door in, drag a cross lay in there with their $4,000 worth of clothing we give them, go back here and pull a kid out and save his life. I don't write letters on people. That is your job. I might give them a high five and they know how I feel about them. But I don't write letters on that. What I write letters on somebody on an ambulance cruise pull up there and they put their gear on and they crawl all the way to the back and pull that kid out. They went beyond their job. Those are the ones we ought to give some award to down here on the banquet. Not somebody that takes a cross lay in and you got a line outside and you go in there and you pull somebody out. That's my pet peeve, my number eight, y'all people in the civil service. Uh, that is our job. It's our job to go down in that basement with black smoke pouring out of that thing and take care of it. I don't have to write a letter on it. Yeah, I got a letter from Adolphus Hotel and we had that big one down there and everything. I found it in some of my junk when I'm cleaning out some stuff the other day. It don't mean anything. The other guy, it's great. Chumney's great because he went to the hospital. But, <coughs> but what I'm saying, that's your job. If you want to write letters on them, write letters on them. I don't care. But that's been a penalty to work for me all these years. They know it all, right, Brian? Right. They had the self-satisfaction and look in the mirror to know they've done their job. You must be ready to act, not react. Never forget the past, experience, the future, as they said. <clears throat> Unless they change that somewhere. We're an interior fire department. Train experience ability and use your God given gift of common sense. Low, medium, high, I'm y'all know all this stuff. You study for a promotion, y'all know May Day. Folks, if we hear emergency traffic, you shut up. That's simple as I can make it. You don't get on the radio unless you've got something you're contributing to that in, right there, that emergency. <coughs> we hear May Day, turn off the ladder pipes. That's not funny. May Day, everything ceases. So we find out, command find out what's going on, and then we recircle the wagons and get a new strategy and tactics going. People are your most important tool. <coughs> Rookie is your most important people. You're my most important tool I have. I used to go with truck 43 up there. We get to her, she's there first. She's my most important thing I've got. It's not that truck. That truck can't do anything unless her driver sets it and they take care of what they need to be doing. <coughs> Use your people and trust them. If you don't trust them, you're going to be a micromanager. I trust you. Hell, I trust you in my life every day. If you have a heart attack, you're going to trust these paramedics, even though you hope some of them, certain ones don't show up, but you're going to trust them. <laughs> See? See? 65 people I have, their mom and dads, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, and their kids has entrusted their lives to me on b -Shift. Your crew, they're all those people that entrusted them to you. Don't ever lose sight of that. That's the most awesome responsibility you have. Tracy Beard, funeral, and I don't deserve it, and I, his brother, 
thank me for letting Tracy come home 25 years every day. But that's my job. That's your job. You can't lose that focus. Every decision you make is based on that. I can't do anything. I can set up and bark orders and tell people to do everything, but I love to get an awl in my hand. I love to get an axe. I like to tear crap up, but I can't put the fire out by myself. Even though Lieutenant 33, sometimes I felt like taking an awl from him and him putting it out years ago, but <laughs> that's a real 33s, right? Chris? I'm glad you're here. I, that, Training. We all go home safe. I like to put this up because it helps make things. I'm simple. God, y'all ought to realize by that now. I don't use big words. I don't do all this stuff. I take it pretty simple. I'm a country old boy from out here east of Dallas. Not much education. A dad that was a Joined Marine Corps in 1935, 16 years old. Got out in 1939, World War II started. He became one of Patton's tank guys because he damn sure didn't want to get a Marine Corps again. He went in the Army, tank commander, South Africa with Patton. European conflict when they landed there, Battle of the Bulge, Silver Star, Purple Heart, carried a gun for the Dallas Police Department for 23 years in charge of Security at the Paramark, Trademark, Trammell Crow Private Security, John Stimmons Private Security. Sixth grade education. He called me one time and he said, I'm going to tell you something, son. When I'm a little bit big for my britches, there's somebody that's smarter, meaner, faster, and bigger than you are. You better realize that now. But nobody can have the heart and the determination, that's all up to you. It's up to you if you want to be the best captain out there. If you want to be a driver from now on, my hat's off to you. You be the best driver you can be.